Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dakota with Tarmi Analytics, and this is my second video on how to make an income statement or any financial statement for that matter in Power BI. We're gonna be using the standard Power BI matrix with measures to enable us to get that custom look that people often ask us for. They want it to look a certain way. So if you haven't seen my first video, which is a different approach, I'll link it here. And other than that, let's jump right in. Step one, we've got to make our measures. And to do so, I'm going to start by making a measures table. This will help us with organization. And it'll also allow us to kind of keep the second part of the income statement in its own area. We've got a measures table here. The column here is uh, useless. We'll get rid of it later though. So to start, we are going to be defining every line in our income statement with a measure. So line one, the top of our income statement will be sales. So we'll do sum of amount where level two is equal to sales. And level two is the structure that we made in part one of building an income statement in Power BI. So we will do the exact same thing on our second measure. And we'll need to make a measure for every one of these lines. Hard work up front, but it just continues to work um, after you build it. So level two, cost of goods sold. And we'll simply hit the check mark and it'll add it right in there. Now you'll see it's going across the columns like that. And what we want is more of a financial statement type view. So if we go here in options on values and we hit switch values to rows, you can see it now goes sales cogs vertically. Let's make one more measure just to further illustrate what we're doing here. So second level here on the indentation beer sales. So level three, and we want beer sales to be returned for this measure. Very important product that we sell. So let's drag that in and you can see how you can just reorder it. Um, we, we drug it right into the middle there and it's between sales and cost of goods sold. So deleting column one, watch what happens. It makes the measures table have a little calculator icon instead of the column icon that it had. So we made the rest of the measures using the same approach that we just walked through, but we're missing a few. We're missing gross profit. We're missing net income. And by doing all this in measures, it gives us the flexibility to define any sort of income statement metric or ratio uh, that we want to. That's, that's the benefit of doing this approach versus the one we did in part one. So gross profit, sales minus cost of goods sold. Let's make that measure. And this one's just really simple arithmetic, but you can imagine what you can do with DAX to really answer any custom questions you have on building a very customized financial statement. So gross profits in there, 15,650 for those three months that we have. Let's do another measure here. We'll zoom in. So in income statements all the time, you're doing ratios to sales. And in this instance, let's do gross profit divided by sales. So like our gross profit margin and the format we want for that is percentage. And we'll, we'll handle all the formatting here in a little bit, but right now we're just finishing our measures. So there's the 50% gross profit margin and let's bring in date. Don't need quarter and we don't need the details by day. Hit the drill down and all of our numbers seem to be aligning with the way that we made the income statement in part one. Don't need two subtotals. So if you go in here to column subtotals and do per column level, we can just do it by year. And the last one we need here is net income the absolute bottom line here. So let's zoom in and net income is going to be defined as our gross profit, subtracting out any operating expenses. 
and subtracting out that GNA. And for those that don't know, GNA in some jurisdictions stands for general and administrative. So it's kind of like your overheads. Okay, let's do some mass formatting here. We're in the relationships pane, so the same place where you establish the connections between tables and build your data model. I'm selecting every measure that we want thousand separators on. So it makes that mass change so we don't have to go one by one. And then gross profit, we want percentage of sales. We want no decimal places on that percentage formatting. And now it's starting to look a little bit better. So now we're at the part where we don't have indentations like we do on the left-hand side and like we want in a financial statement, right? It's just, it looks better. It's better for organization. And if I put the spaces in there, it doesn't work. One thing you can do is hit the windows plus the period key and you can enter in emojis or custom symbols like this sideways triangle. And if you press enter, that will show up. And if we adjust the first one, so I mean, you could do a hundred, a thousand different things here. I personally don't really like the way that looks. So let's do something even better. We still can't do the spaces. Okay, so here's the trick. If you turn text wrap off, go back, add your three spaces, press enter. It now acknowledges that you want those spaces there and we can create custom levels of indentation right here without affecting the names of our actual measures. So now that we've got all of our indentation the way that we like it or the way that our boss requested it, let's go to some specific column formatting here. And we want probably different levels of shading. So sales is an important line. Let's just shade it blue. You can apply it to the header, turn that off and on, apply it to the total, or actually this is a subtotal. Um, you can see how these in the specific column formatting part of this visual, you can really get creative and they've added more and more functionality here. So I expect more to be there. So cogs and gross profit, we'll add some shading there. Then if you have uh, some ratios that you've embedded in your income statement, maybe you want those to be a different text color. So they kind of hide a little bit because they're more informational. Only so let's review the pros and cons of both approaches. In video one, we actually put structure around the basic general ledger data dump. And the benefits of this is, you know, you actually make a small data model and it's a little more robust, but you are more limited on the formatting options, even though you're establishing a hierarchy. In this video, we did it all with measures. And what that allowed us to do is have more flexibility within that matrix visual. But of course it was tedious on the front end. So if you like this video, hit like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.